Hello, this is JW, and in this video we're going to have a look at one of these. Just one of these uh, neon testing, uh, laughably called screwdriver things. And the idea is you put this metal end on a live terminal, and then you poke your finger on the metal end, and a little neon thing inside lights up to tell you whether there's power there or not. Pretty unsafe concept. Now I'll have a look why you should never ever use one of these, and what can go wrong if you do. Now this is how these things are supposed to be used. You're supposed to put the uh, end into a live terminal and then you're supposed to touch this end and then the little neon in the centre there is supposed to glow, does it? Well, sort of. You can probably just about see in here the small neon on, off and so on. This really highlights that one major problem with these things in that if there's a lot of light in the area it's actually really difficult to see the thing. This room is fairly well lit, but of course if you're outside, for example, on a sunny day, there's no way in hell you're going to see anything in there. Now let's just try this with a lower level of illumination and hopefully you can see the neon a bit more clearly. All right, now here's a uh, low light situation and uh, hopefully if I touch this this time, you'll be able to see it illuminating in the centre there. If I just shade that, you can see it's reasonably clear if it's in a darkened area. Now back in normal lighting, let's just get rid of that piece. So what you should use to test the mains is something like this, which has two probes, uh, one of which goes onto the uh, neutral and the other into the live, or whichever you're testing, and the light comes on. Of course you're testing for voltage, which is always done between two different points. This is not polarity sensitive, so obviously it will work uh, either way around as well. Notice it has the proper probes on the end with the very small amount of metal exposed finger guards here and obviously this is properly rated for uh, up to 500 volts. This thing of course is supposed to be rated uh, as it says on the side up to 500 as well but I wouldn't want to be putting that anywhere near 500 volts. Now these things are unsafe because in first instance they're actually unreliable they don't always work. As you saw before it's actually quite difficult to see the neon indicator in this sort of light level. However, sometimes they don't actually work at all, as we'll now demonstrate. Now here we have the same arrangement of the mains on this side and this neon thing here. But if I touch the end of it, you see there's actually no illumination going on there whatsoever. Bearing in mind the neon is here, and it's just simply not working. Of course there is still power there if we use the other proof device. There's still mains there. And yet if we used our little testing thing, absolutely nothing. It simply doesn't work. Now here's the same setup uh, with the lights reduced. So again, if we put the probes in here, again, there's that 258, nearly 260 volts. But as you can see, it's simply not illuminating. Just put a shadow there. Nope. Nothing at all. Totally useless. Here's almost exactly the same setup. Probes in there, 250 volts there. And this time, there it is. It is actually illuminating. And yet the whole time we had the lethal voltage on those terminals, Sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. Here's another demonstration there with the lights turned down. This is a piece of cardboard. So no electricity there. Touch it with both fingers. No, nope, nothing. Here's the neon device. I place it near on the cardboard and it lights up. So that really is telling us there's power there, when obviously there isn't. And so my finger there, it goes off and it comes on, and so really totally useless. Now a major problem with these things is the fact that they rely on your finger being on this metal cap to complete the circuit. So mains here, your finger there, not a whole lot in the middle there preventing you from getting an electric shock, and having a test device that relies on your body to create the circuit is a very poor solution indeed. Right, now here's the inside components. Uh, this is just a plastic moulding with the 
screwdriver blade embedded in it. So that just goes straight through up to that point, it's a solid piece of metal. Next we have this little pellet, which is actually a resistor, possibly some kind of carbon uh, material. Top of that we have the neon lamp itself, just a small glass enclosure. It has two wires, one wire that comes out the bottom there. This plastic part is just uh, pressed on. And then there's the other wire there, just poked up the side. This spring goes over the top of this to obviously connect with that little bit of wire. And then the spring goes up inside this cap, which has that metal contact in there, which comes through to that thing on the top. So all that's between you and the mains, essentially these two components, the little carbon resistor and the neon lamp. Now neon doesn't conduct up to about 70-80 volts, but when it does illuminate it will conduct through really well. So if this uh, neon was the only thing in there, you would get a shock when you put your finger on the end. So ultimately it comes down to this small carbon resistor that prevents you from getting a shock. So let's just measure the resistance of that uh, carbon pellet or whatever the hell it's made of. Let's get the uh, meter in there. OK, there we go. So it's about 1.5 mega ohms. Now that's plenty enough to prevent you from getting a shock. But unfortunately, if this got damp or damaged in any way, it's not going to be difficult for the mains to go across it and therefore kill whoever's holding the device. Now, you must use a single uh, pole or device to check whether there's power or not. Uh, one of these is a much safer option. Uh, these are battery powered and, unlike the other device, does not require your fingers to be in contact with bare metal. This is an all plastic construction and it just has a small sensing coil in the end and the end will light up red when it's placed near a power source. Of course these still have plenty of disadvantages in that they're not necessarily particularly reliable. They can work in some situations and not in others. For example if we just bring in the uh, testing thing again, if I place this in here, see that's pretty obviously not lighting up even though I've actually put the end right onto the terminal. If we use the uh, proper testing device here, let's go in there. And in here, as you can see, there's certainly power there, and yet this device is not illuminating. Now this time, if you place it here, as you can see, it will illuminate. And as with the other place, if we use the uh, approved device, it will illuminate to show that there is power there. So although these things do work, they have the same disadvantages as the other in that uh, sometimes they will and sometimes they won't. It all depends on uh, the exact characteristics of what you're probing against. As before, here's the magic cardboard and uh, as you see it's illuminating uh, here and in fact over here and in fact it's illuminating all over the place simply because of what's behind this piece of card. And you will find actually in houses occasionally you can just wave this across a wall and it will just light up in apparently random positions for no reason. You can uh, just rub it on the sleeve of a bit of cloth and it will light up. So not something you want to rely on. They do have their uses in say proving that something is actually on. But you must not use one of these to confirm that something is dead because it might not be reliable and you could then go and put your things into live terminals. So that is why you don't use these ever and the only place that for these is in the bin. These are much safer because you're not requiring your body to be part of the circuit. However, these do have certain disadvantages as well. So again, just to be aware that these are not something you want to go checking around and making sure the power is off. They are fine though for confirming that the power is on. And for confirming that the power is in fact off, you want to be using a two-pole device, something like this, or there's many other types and styles available. The key information is got two points and you're measuring the voltage between two points, not random uh, bits of your body or just something floating about in free air. And just for completion, uh, what was behind the magic cardboard you may have already guessed. It's one of these uh, plasma ball type things.